So this will be a super quick video. I just wanted to show a technique of using Booleans to quickly generate those inset buttons you see on some devices or scoops for inset screw heads and that kind of stuff. Uh, and then we'll look at another technique for modeling uh, shapes that are a little more complicated, like spheres with like swirls cut out of them and stuff. But you want that to look like it's been peeled off the surface, not just cut in. And you'll see when we get there. It, it's a pretty straightforward setup and it's handy for a lot of stuff. So let's dig in. So to inset a button in the method that I'm, I'm thinking of here using Booleans, it's essentially you cut the hole, you insert the button, and then dress it up however you want to dress it up. But you'll see we only need a couple of shapes to pull this off and using Boolean, or using live Booleans of any kind really makes this much, much quicker and simpler. And it gives you a lot of precision. So let's say we want to insert the button into this, uh, this oblong shape here. So I'll, I'll turn that into a mesh up Boolean. And this is the, uh, the workhorse shape that I'm going to be using for most of this. So I'm going to take this and turn it into a subtractive and drag it down to where it's just starting to push into the surface. So we're going to go a little deeper than I need to just, just for, uh, for safety margin. Okay. So if I render this, you can see now we've got a, you know, a curved surface with a nice hole cut in it. Uh, a good start. I'm going to copy that same shape, paste it into a new mesh item. We're going to invert it. I'm going to use the push tool to push it in just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of an edge around the outside. Drop that and then drag it down to where I want it to be. Let's say we want the button to sit about here. Drop that tool. Okay. So using that same mesh, just copied and pasted and dropped back in, we now have a button sitting inside the hole. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to open up my mop boolean here, grab my subtractive brush again, put it into a new mesh item. Now I want to add like a rim around the outside of this hole. So we can do that pretty easily by again, dropping it in using push to go the other direction outwards. And I'm going to drop that into the union operator so it gets merged in with the original shape. Pull this down until it's inside the subtractive. See how the subtractive is now cutting that as well? Pull it down to just about, just about the, I'll get the height to work for you at the highest point and don't worry about these outside areas. We'll get to that in a minute. So this still looks a little thin for me. So we're going to push it out until it's a good thickness. Maybe, I don't know, there seems fine. Okay. Now we have this shape, which gives us a ridge, but ideally the ridge would sort of lay flush with the surface. And we can just, we can do that with an intersection very easily. So if I go back to the original shape, copy this, and I'm going to drop this into the intersection node like this. Now it looks messy because it's laying on top of the exact same position as before. But if I push it, you can see that we get a nice even curve on this trim piece. We're hitting it nice and simple or nice and flush. I should say you know, at a uniform height. So pick something that's, you know, works for you visually. Let's just call it there and rendering this now will give me an inset button using just a couple of, of geometric pieces uh, with the trim laying flush to the uh, the original surface that works for me and from here you can begin to experiment with it let's grab the the button mesh let's throw a couple of cuts in here maybe grab this end of the button here and push it up so it's sort of like a toggle switch or something yeah you could you can have fun with it basically you can make it a toggle switch do whatever you want to do with it and the final thing i would do on this is grab all of these operators and give them all the rounded edge shader they don't have it on right now so we'll hit them with a medium-sized rounded edge shader render this up 
and now you can see we're getting that nice nice blend between the surfaces that makes it look like a manufactured item uh, it's a little janky here in terms of this area here looks a little janky in terms of smoothing but you know that's easily fixable with some sub d and edge tweaking but uh, the technique is what's important here so i'm realizing now that overhangs is probably not the correct term for this uh, what we're going to do is take a sphere we're going to cut a bunch of chunks out of it and make it look like those chunks were peeled off the surface yeah, as opposed to just being holes so straightforward setup we've got a sphere and a cutter that i'm going to use so first step turn this into a mop boolean second step grab this and make it a subtractive mesh for the sphere and i'm going to drag that over so it's pushing into the sphere and you can see you get that that cut as expected now i'm going to go ahead and just make a few of these because uh, i want to have some decent variety going on on the sphere you know lots of different cuts lots of different angles you know, different depths maybe some are a different size maybe some if i set the rotation to the origin can be you know, kind of offset a little bit this one here we'll throw him back at the origin pull that one over that way then grab all of these mirror them across to the other side and then maybe do the same thing but put it back at the origin and rotate this up so they're cutting into the top now that's probably yeah that's conflicting with the other subtract so we'll take that out and put it into the alt subtract so they don't conflict anymore so this seems sufficiently like we've got a bunch of crazy stuff going on it's a sphere with chunks cut out so next up we simply grab the base mesh like we had originally we're going to paste it into a new mesh item and give it a push push it in until the skin is as thick as you want it to be let's just say that's what i'm looking for right there let go and render it out and now you have a sphere that looks like actually it kind of looks like it was sculpted in zbrush <laughs> you know somebody went in there with an alt click and drag but that's essentially the method you get a nice uh, inset effect going on and like always if i grab these if i grab these and don't misclick and give them all uh, the rounded edge shader treat you can see now we get the nice intersection smoothing and everything looks like it's hanging together as it should so there's a couple of quick little modeling techniques that you can uh, really leverage booleans for uh, modeling this stuff by hand would be a huge pain in the butt so use the tools you've got available to you thanks for watching